On February 3rd, a train carrying toxic chemicals derailed in Ohio, igniting a fire and blanketing the region with both smoke and chemicals. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine ordered local residents to evacuate as officials carried out a controlled release of the toxic fumes. Both the Biden administration and the legacy media have basically ignored this disaster. The question is why? Well, join me now to discuss this and more is Congressman Warren Davidson. He serves on the House Financial Services Committee. He represents the 8th Congressional District of Ohio. Congressman Davidson, welcome back to Washington Watch. Always an honor to join you, Tony. Thanks for talking about this. Well, I know this derailment did not take place in your district, but it did happen uh, in, on the other side of the state in Ohio, and it's something the delegation's been concerned about. Tell us what you know. The evacuation order has ended. Some residents have returned home. What, uh, what's the latest information coming from this disaster? Well, uh, what, what you highlighted, you know, is the derailment happened on February 3rd. And, you know, it was 50 rail cars, 10 of which had hazardous materials on them. And at that point, there were no good options. They were afraid that there was going to be a boiling explosion. It would have uh, vaporized all of the liquid in there and spread it in a much further area. The blast radius would have been enormous. Uh, so they did a controlled release of it. They built a catch basin uh, and ignited it so that it would consume the liquid rather than letting the liquid penetrate the ground. So all the options are bad um, and the hazardous site is still dangerous and uh, big and it will be a enormous environmental cleanup project. Uh, right now there are a lot of residents who are concerned did they get the whole truth? Is the water that in their area clean and safe? And unfortunately when they evacuated people. Some animals weren't evacuated uh, and the waterways have dead fish in them. So they're concerned that any of the water wouldn't properly be filtered through the water treatment system. And certainly any groundwater that people have in a well uh, system wouldn't be safe to drink. Governor DeWine has uh, been kind of upset over information that has not been passed on to Ohio. In fact, in, in one uh, report he was talking about how the state of Ohio and any state should be advised when uh, hazardous materials are moving through their state. What's the sense there on the ground in terms of the Department of Transportation uh, and the federal government's response? I think there's a lot of frustration. I mean, you think about it, uh, you know, the Secretary of Transportation, he didn't first comment on it, on it until Tucker Carlson did a segment on it. Uh, so Tucker Carlson was doing a segment with our, our newly elected Senator J.D. Vance, and during that hour was the first public comment from the Tr Secretary of Transportation. Uh, now, NTSB, the uh, safety board, is out looking at what was the cause. Uh, the EPA has been responsive. Uh, you know, you look at FEMA, there's a role here. And I think the everyone's kind of been underwhelmed with the kind of coordination that we've seen in other disasters. And when you look at the size of this, it's literally like a quarter mile from Pennsylvania. It's just above the uh, Ohio River. There are contaminants in the Ohio River, as you said, and I'm about four and a half hours away, um, closer to Cincinnati. Uh, the district is, it includes the west side of Cincinnati. So the west uh, western portion of the Ohio River, west of Cincinnati to the Indiana state line is the southern border of the 8th district. And the uh, city tested uh, chemicals in present, now not in high levels this far away, uh, but there's a lot of concern as you get close to this. And if this doesn't qualify as a federal site that hits Ohio, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, at a minimum, uh, you know, then, then what does? And with the rail companies all over the country, we've seen, you know, derailments, but also with the recent labor strike, a lot of concern, uh, are the rail companies really adequately paying attention to this? So there's a a lot of uh, interest in having this elevated uh, and getting higher level attention from Congress and certainly from the Secretary of Transportation. Yeah, I mean, there there are, I think, over a thousand derailments a year. I mean, th these are major problems. And I know the Biden administration has been, uh, you know, crowing about their quote unquote bipartisan infrastructure bill. Uh, but we're seeing one kind of crisis after another, many of them self-imposed, like where we had the own uh, the FAA's own computer system uh, kind of implode, suspending flights for, for hours. I is this another example of the left's identity politics 
you know, advocating putting uh, Pete Buttigieg in this position because he checks one of those boxes for the president, as opposed to having competent people in these positions. Yeah, I think that's highlighted. I mean, you know, if there was any question whether it was a good idea to have Mayor Pete become Secretary Pete, uh, <clears throat> the past two years have answered that. Surely uh, there has to be some level of criteria that will get uh, a Biden administration employee fired. Uh, and that's the thing. You haven't seen Joe Biden say you're fired to anybody. And, it, it, you know, how do you not fire somebody? There's been incompetence and mismanagement everywhere. Uh, and, you know, as he's highlighting, well, you know, you know, the, the workers don't look a whole lot like the people that live in Martha's Vineyard or the Hamptons or Beverly Hills either. Thankfully, we've got people showing up to work. Uh, you know, the Secretary of Transportation needs to show up and pay attention to the job he's got. Uh, someone has to do it, and if he's not going to, he needs to step aside if no one will fire him and let somebody else get the mission accomplished. Well, I mean, it's normal, I guess, that you would focus on this identity politics that you made reference to about the workers representing or looking like the neighborhoods they're working in. That would be normal if, if you're a product of that. And, and, and as you pointed out, Mayor Pete, who became Secretary Pete, he's a product of that. He's Joe Biden put him in place because he is an open uh, homosexual that's married to a man, and they put him in that post because it checks one of those political boxes, the identity politics that the left likes to play. Yeah, and, and look, uh, well, I'm fine if there's diversity, if uh, the first criteria is excellent. Everyone I know who's going into surgery wants the best surgeon, and they can overcome whatever accent they got to work through to know that their surgeon is the best person for the job. And I think we surely could expect that uh, when it comes to our cabinet officials. One final question for you, Congressman Davidson. I mean, I know there are already hearings looking into Homeland Security and the crisis at the border and the incompetence of the Secretary of Homeland Security. Can we expect to see Congress looking into the competence of the Secretary of Department of Transportation? How could we not? I mean, I certainly know it's come up uh, in talking with my colleagues, and certainly the Ohio delegation is frustrated about it. And uh, gosh, the list is long uh, in terms of uh, administration officials that need it. But hey, we've got committees of jurisdiction now that will cover all of them. And I hope that, uh, frankly, this is a bipartisan thing. You know, I saw Nina Turner, who's a pretty far left uh, you know, Democrat in Ohio, so far left she didn't win the primary when she ran to fill now secretary fudges. Um, congressional seat when uh, Marsha Pledge became Secretary of HUD. Yeah. Nina Turner uh, and I agree, Ohio deserves better from the Secretary of Transportation. Yeah. And uh, hopefully the accountability for Secretary Buttigieg is, uh, is bipartisan. All right. Well, we'll, we'll be watching for that. Uh, Congressman Warren Davidson, always great to see you. Thank you.